what's up guys, it's me African Hair God. I have gotten a lot of questions over the years about excessive shedding. Um, I've recently gotten questions about the hair growth cycle and um, some questions as to why one side of your hair says to grow faster or longer versus the other side. So I'm going to answer those questions for you today and hopefully clear up any misconceptions. well with you. I know it's been a minute since I posted the video, um, but here I am. And today I'm going to talk about the hair growth cycle and also touch on why your hair is shedding um, and answer some questions regarding excessive shedding. Now, this video is prompted because someone wanted to know um, why their hair is excessively shedding. Um, before I get into answering that question, we first have to understand the hair growth cycle to understand why hair is shedding naturally. <laughs> so there are three stages in the hair growth cycle. I'm not going to get too in depth with this because it gets real sciencey. but what you just need to know is that there's three uh, different stages, the antigen, the catagen, and the telogen or telogen stage. Okay, so the antigen stage, which lasts about two to six or seven years, um, this is predetermined through genetics, you can think of this as the growing stage of the hair growth cycle. What is happening at this stage in the hair game, your hair shaft is literally just growing out from the hair follicle. Um, and you can think of your hair follicle as like the pocket at which your hair shaft grows out of. Um, and what your hair shaft is attached to is the dermal papilla. It basically provides blood flow to the hair strand which helps give it nutrients um, and vitamins and all that different stuff that the, the blood flow gives to help promote healthy hair growth, okay? So that's why when people are always trying to promote hair growth and they're trying to increase blood circulation because more blood flow, more nutrients, more healthy hair, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So again, in this stage, the hair is literally just growing. Um, it's just receiving those nutrients, those benefits, and it's just... It's just growing. At this point, um, at this stage, about 85% of your hair is always in the t um, antigen stage of hair growth, okay? So the next stage is the catagen. You can think of this as either the transitioning stage or some people like to think of it as the resting stage. Um, and this period lasts anywhere from one to two weeks. And what happens during this stage is that the hair shaft separates from the derma papilla and your hair follicle begins to contract and shrink. What's happening is your hair follicle is beginning to prepare itself to rego the antigen stage and regrow a whole new hair follicle. So it's basically kind of um, revitalizing itself during this stage. So it's releasing the hair shaft and continually shrinking up to about one-sixth of its normal size. Okay, and at this point, because the hair shaft isn't connected to the dermal papilla, the hair isn't receiving any nutrients, any benefits from the body, from the blood, so it's literally just there. Also, for the catagen stage, about 1% of the hair on your head is in the catagen stage, okay? Moving on to the telogen stage, a lot of people like to think of the telogen or telogen stage as the shedding stage of hair growth. And basically what's happening is the hair strand is just slowly being worked up and up and out of the epidermis layer of the skin until it is just naturally shed. This takes the course of one to four months actually, and about 10% of the hairs on your head is in the telogen stage of hair growth. Now after the hair strand has, or the hair shaft has completely left, the epidermis or the skin or the follicle completely, what's going to happen is your uh, follicle is going to undergo the antigen stage again and regrow a new strand out of the one that just shed. Okay? And you also need to realize that all of the different strands of hair on your head independently are going through their own hair growth cycle. So you're not going to have just one side of your head just antigen over here, telogen over here, and catagen up here. It doesn't work like that. Every single hair strand is independently going through his hair growth cycle. Okay, I also forgot to mention that the antigen or the growing stage is also predetermined through genetics. So the length of time that your hair is going to grow out 
of that uh, hair follicle before it proceeds to the catagen and telogen stage is due to genetics. So this is also a reason why certain people's hair just naturally tends to grow out longer than others. This doesn't mean that your hair cannot grow longer. There are ways to help promote healthy hair growth, to help promote healthy lip retention so that your hair can grow as long as it can possibly grow. This is also the reason why I touched on this in um, the live reaction video as to why certain hairs on your body doesn't grow as long as the hairs on your head, such as your eyebrows, your mustache, your armpit hair, your pubic hairs. They all have their own set amount of time in that antigen stage before it proceeds to the other two stages, okay? Now that we understand why your hair naturally grows out, rests, and then sheds from your head, we need to understand and know what is normal shedding for each of our heads. It is important for you to know what's normal shedding for your hair so that you can identify when your hair is excessively shedding. Now there are a lot of natural remedies that people say help reduce shedding. I don't really, first of all, I don't really believe those stuff work. That's just me. I've tried the tea rinses. But I actually went as far as to collect shed hair from a previous month and then do the T-rinse and then collect it from the next month and I didn't notice not one single difference between the two. But that's just me, okay? I don't think that mess works and I don't think you necessarily need to not promote shedding because again, it's just a part of the natural hair growth cycle. So shedding is just a part of your natural body's physiological way of just revitalizing itself. It's just what is naturally intended to happen. So, yeah, it's important for you to know what is normal shedding for you, so you need to get a sense of weekly, monthly, when you do protective styles, how much you can expect, because when your hair does excessively shed, you need to know when it's happening so that you can look for things that's going on with your hair. Now, there could be reasons to why your hair is excessively shedding, including um, medicine, uh, medical treatments, hormonal changes in your body, lack of vitamins and minerals in your diet, a lot of different things. And it's hard to pinpoint what's going on with your body. So any event that you are noticing excessive shedding for a prolonged period of time, I highly recommend that you go see a medical professional about it um, and find out what's going on because it could be a lot deeper than you just shedding more hair than you're supposed to. Okay, um, but when you are experiencing or when you think you're experiencing excessive shedding, what you want to look for is thinning in your hair. Um, what, that could be um, some breakage that's going on along with your shedding that's making it look fuller. Um, so you want to look for thinning, you want to look for split ends, you want to look for breakage along your root area where the strands are just very, very short in a very concentrated way as opposed to the rest of your hair. Um, you want to look for thinning along your hairline and things like that because that could also be a sign that your hairline is coming out from either protective style or from you know mechanical damage with scars and, and things like that. So um, what else could be? You want to also look for um, thin uh, baldness or just real patchy um, thinningness around your scalp area. In particular areas, I have seen that happen as well. And that could be a sign of something else that is going on internally in your body as well. So that's another reason why you definitely want to go see a medical professional about that. All right, so now that we got that out the way, a lot of people mistakenly identify their hair as excessively shedding um, because they're either mishandling their hair pro improperly as they are detangling or manipulating it, or another reason is because they are keeping styles in for a prolonged period of time, and of course your hair is naturally shedding, but it's not falling out of your hair because it's just collectively in the style. So when you finally go in weeks later, months later, and try to detangle and remove shed hair, you're noticing an excessive amount of hair coming out. And it's not necessarily excessive, it's just all coming out at once, whereas had you been manipulating your hair normally throughout your routine, it would just been coming out regularly like it normally does. So don't mistake in having styles in and not detangling for a prolonged period of time as excessive shedding, okay? Just realize that your hair does shed on average 50 to 200 strands of hair per day on your head. This is dependent upon how thick your hair is and also, of course, genetics is gonna play a factor in this as well. But of course, the more thick and full and more dense and more number of hair strands that you have on your head, the more 
amount of strands that you are going to shed on a daily basis. Now they say on average people with naturally black hair have about 108,000 hairs on their head. Um, now this, this number can definitely fluctuate because I've seen some people with black hair that their hair was really thin and I've seen some people where their hair was really really thick so yeah that's just an average alright. I also received questions about um, why one side of their hair tends to grow faster or they tend to retain length on one side better than the other. I've heard people come up with, oh, you know, you sleep on one side of your head, so, you know, the other side get more blood flow than that one, and so that's why that side grow faster. Like, that, that never really made sense to me, because I'm one of those people where one side grows faster than the other, and for me, I always sleep sporadically. I'm never on just one side of my head throughout the entire night. I'm all over the damn place, okay? Um, and so I've recently learned that because our bodies are designed asymmetrically, our heart is on the left side of our body. So the upper left half of our body and the lower right half of your body gets more blood flow than the other side. Okay, so I think this also translates to the areas on your scalp as well in your head. So, of course, because these particular areas in our body receive more blood flow um, due to the heart pumping the blood in a particular way, they tend to get more blood circulation, which means more nutrients, more vitamins for the hair, which means faster, more healthier hair growth in those particular areas, which is why one side tends to grow out longer than the other. It has nothing to do with what, how you sleep in at night. Okay, for some people it may, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not the main reason. I'm and another thing, I don't know who came up with this 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 misconception or this myth that because um, you're a man, your hair just naturally grows faster than a woman. Who? Where did y'all read that from? Who came up with that shit? That don't even make sense. Because I'm a man and I'm hairy, I, my hair just grows faster. Bitch, you sound stupid. You sound stupid. I need you to read a book, okay? I need you to do some research because I don't know where the hell you got that shit from, but that shit don't even make no damn sense. If you actually look at a lot of the male natural hair vloggers on here, most of us have an average hair growth. If you look at me, if you look at Afro Hair Addictions, um, there were a couple of people, but they kind of fell off, but we're not going to talk about that. R.I.P. for my male natural hair vloggers. R.I.P. But all I'm saying is... There's no there's no correlation to being male or female or having more or less hair growth. Again, it's all just predetermined through genetics and a lot of environmental factors and internal factors and things like that. So, we're, please stop going around the natural hair community saying that shit because it just sounds ignorant and stupid. It makes no sense. You have no justification as to why you feel that that is the way it is. Like, it just makes no sense. Just stop it. Okay, just shh. That's pretty much it. I hope I have answered your questions. I know I kind of be talking in circles a little bit, but hopefully it all made sense to you. And if you have any questions, you can, of course, leave it in the comment section below. If you all would like to see more videos like this, I really highly encourage you to check out my Patreon page and become a patron. Um, I kicked this page off, I believe, last year. And it hasn't really picked up much, but I really want to do a lot more with this channel and provide a lot more content and do a lot more things. And it does require um, a financial <laughs> investment and to get more equipment, to get um, better things for me to help do more with this channel. So it is basically a uh, basically a, a, a monthly donation that you're pledging. You can uh, accept or deny your pledge every month so it's not anything that you have to do every single month but it does help and go towards the brand the African Hair God channel and just providing you all with more content and being able to do more for you guys so please check it out in the description box below and um what else that's it um I will see you all later in the next video again hope you all enjoyed the information I just provided and until then be blessed bye